episode three. Might be a short one. I don't know. We'll see. But I do I do know what song I'm going to play first, and I also know which guitar I'm going to play first. And uh, this guitar here, let me cut on the Fender amp. That helped. Here we go. I'm just going to play acoustic. Um, but uh, this song is called Clothesline, and uh, a lot of my... My, my older friends know it, people I've known since, you know, the 90s, and uh, it hasn't changed since I wrote it in 1998, when we moved to North Carolina, and um, small house on Moorhead Street. Uh, we had it configured for four bedrooms, a mill house, a mill house with a bathroom and a kitchen and a, and a room big enough to watch TV in. On a tenth acre lot with a tree that had a swing that we put up and a shed out back and enough room for a trampoline or a you know, a good size Kmart pool. We were living pretty simply. Oh, and we had a really excellent front porch. So I'm thinking about my grandparents and hanging clothes outdoors after after they'd spun around in this old this was like in the early 1960s they had this old barrel washing machine and on the back of it was one of those things with the two wooden rollers 
that they would always warn you that if you got your fingers in there, you know, you were done for. And um, I think Stephen King even wrote a scary story about one of those, one of them things. But I do think sheets smell better when you let God dry them. Um, for sure. We have a clothesline out there on the deck that runs from the deck all the way out to that giant pecan tree. And uh, the only place you can reach the clothesline is on the deck because the drop deck drops off six, seven feet. Uh, you got to go down steps to get off it, but it's it's anchored way the way the hell up in that pecan tree out there, and you can reel it back and forth. You know, like those old pictures in the cities between the apartment buildings. It's kind of like that. And I guess I was also thinking about when we lived in Indiana. For some reason, I seem to remember one of those spinning, four-sided clothesline things that was kind of on a post set in concrete that would spin around. And I guess you could hang two things this way and that way and that way. You kind of have eight different little places to hang your stuff on. I think we had one of them. Uh, this guitar, uh, this Takamini guitar, I do not know what the model is. I don't know how well you can see it, but if you look at that headstock, that looks a whole mess like a Martin, don't it? And I, I remember over the years I've been hearing stories about the, the Martin Takamini lawsuit, lawsuit. It says on here this company was started in the 60s, and I'm pretty sure this guitar was bought probably between 78 and 81 by Tina's older brother when they lived down there in uh... it's a great guitar It's in excellent shape. It's only got a couple of marks on the back of the neck where it was leaned up against the table. You know, how many of us haven't done that? And, uh, well, you know, some extremely not noticeable blemishes to anybody that isn't actually holding it. Doesn't have any buckle marks. You know. This is the way it was purchased. It's got decent tuners on it. Um, real good sound. I've never got in there and looked, but from here it appears that it's X-braced, which is a Martin thing. That old K guitar that I've got is X-braced too, from the 40s. Um, but here's the story of this guitar as best I can tell it. So, um... So uh, way back in the in the in the late '70s or somewhere around 1980 or so, Tina's older brother Sam, who's one of them guys, he's a, he's about a year older than her. He's a couple of years younger than me. He's around 60. <clears throat> but anyway, um, he got this guitar new when they were living down in uh, Louisiana. This kind of guitar here and. Um, you know, it's a good sounding guitar. And Sam's the kind of guy that you want to have at the campfire. Because, you know, as long as there's a guitar and a pick and beer and a light and someone to listen, he could probably keep going with just banging out. Just, just banging out these excellent 
sing-along versions of all kinds of things. When we get together, we'll like start playing tunes by the band, you know, The Weight or Cripple Creek or something. Um, but anyways, uh, so he had it, and at some point it passed into the hands of Tina. I think she might have bought it from him. And, um, and she had it for a long time. And I think at some point he wanted that back or wanted to buy it back. And she was like, no. And uh, so anyways, you know, she grew up, got older, married, had kids, you know, all the while, you know, she was a poet when she was younger and, and, and uh, had a lot of, you know, lyric potential already in those uh, poems, you know, and she's learning how to play guitar. She's mostly uh, uh, use, uses a pick, but there's some things where she gets in there and does other stuff. She's generally down here by the nut, you know, when she's writing tunes. She's, she'll, t she'll be the first one to tell you that, you know, she wishes she could jam with people and stuff, but she's just got this, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the argument about you know, do you need 16 crayons in a box or do you need 160 something crayons in the box? You know, I'll take 64. Um, but she'd probably go for 16 or 12. Just, you know, I can, I can add something to, to the E chord if I need to mix my <laughs> orange and yellow together, you know, or whatever. But, um, so she got it and she starts doing tunes, right? You know, kind of putting some of her stuff to, to music and whatever. And before you know it, she's out doing open mics and, you know, on occasion and getting together with friends and stuff. And, um, and then, um, things get, uh, God, I hate to say too much. <laughs> things get unbearable. How's that? How's that? Just for one word, uh, between the two of Tina and her husband, and they uh, they end up separating, and um, and she's in a pretty tough spot with these two young kids, you know, who are, you know, you know, I don't know, kindergarten, first grade, one of them, and the other ones in like fourth and fifth grade, and that's a those are years where you need to be on your game. And, uh, you know, having, having the moneymaker take off, basically he disappeared for two years and ended up in Mexico. He's not Mexican, but that's where he was. Uh, but anyway, so she was on her own and having a pretty hard go. And at some point, uh, she had to sell her Takamine. I don't know whether she went into a music store or a pawn shop or just sold it to somebody. Um, but she had to part with it. And this is a long time before I met her. Okay. And so she continues on with her life and she's raising her kids and so on and so forth. And at some point, yeah, I reckon she's borrowing guitars from people. And I know at one point she was dating a guy that worked in a music store. And, um, you know, and then we met around 96, 7. And, um, she, you know, this guitar is long gone at that point. And, uh, and before you know it, we're, we're married and we got a kid together and we got her two kids custody, you know, legal custody of them. That was, there's a whole nother video. And, um, but, uh, you know, and the kids grow up and leave high school. Lord have mercy, I don't know when that stopped taping. I'm going to have to probably make an edit okay but anyway um i'm gonna jump in so last i knew i was talking about mike had contacted me when he was over in the middle east he was probably in iraq and and he asked for a picture of this instrument because he knew there was a picture of his mom playing this guitar in the woods and we found a picture and i took a picture of the picture i mailed you know i emailed it to him well he gets in touch with me a while later a few months i think it was and he says, expect a package. I'm sending it to mom for Mother's Day. And I said, what is it? 
And he said, I found the same model guitar she used to have. Looks just like the one in the picture. Somebody in Iowa was selling it on, I don't know, eBay or something. And, um, <clears throat> and it's coming. So what I want you to do when it gets there is... Um, I, 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 I want you to uh, take a picture of her expression when she opens the package and send it to me. I think she'll like it. I said, sure, I'll do that, you know. So it arrives. She comes home. I think she was painting in house, the insides of houses back then. She, she gets home, and, and she's like, what's that? And I said, Mike sent it to you. And she opens it up, and it was in a case. And she gets it out and she goes, oh my God, it looks just like my old guitar. And she's checking it out and stuff. And she played it a little bit, you know. And she said, oh, it sounds nice, you know. And so she handed it to me and I checked out the neck and everything. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's in great shape. Even these strings are pretty good you know and as she continues to examine the instrument she starts getting this quizzical look on her face and eventually she realizes that the marks on the back of this neck are familiar to her and as well as a couple of other marks on it in certain places and she goes I really think this is the same guitar that I used to have and then she called her brother and she described the blemishes that are on it to him and he said, yeah, that sounds like it. So somehow or another, you know, by the grace of fate and being in the right place, looking for the right thing at the right time, Michael, who always felt bad that his mom had to sell her guitar in order to feed him and Lindsay when they were little kids. So this is like 20 years later. That just... That just sat on his heart all them years, like what it took for her to part with that instrument she liked so much. And somehow he, got, he, said he found it and sent it back home to mom. And uh, it's an amazing story. I, I love it. I should also mention what Tina was born on the day, I shouldn't say the year, February 9, the day that the Beatles played on the Ed Sullivan Show. So she's cool in a host of ways, and that's just another one. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about today. And uh, I'll try to remember to put at least one of the really cool studio recordings that various people have done uh, of that song, Clothesline, if I can hunt them up uh, down in the description. Okay? It was fun telling you about this guitar. All right, happy trails, people.